Hey everyone, Current ECG here. My name's Dave Klein and I'll be your tour guide for the next uh, couple of minutes or so. And by the end of this episode, I hope to have you all literally depolarizing right out of your seat. Now today I want to talk about scarbosis criteria, the diagnosis of STEMI in the presence of a left bundle branch block. For years we were told, you can't do that, it won't work, there's no point in looking for it. But then Dr. Elena Scarbosa, she came along, she did a bunch of research and she said no, it is possible. And today we now have Dr. Elena Scarbosa's criteria, which allows us to accurately identify STEMI in the presence of a left bundle branch block. Now before we get into how to do that, we need to understand how does the left bundle branch block work? And so have a look at this image here. So on the left is the normal electrical conduction pathway. On the right, there's a bundle branch block. But first, focus on the left. So you have your SA node that sends a signal down through the internodal pathways to your AV node. It gets held up at your bundle of hiss. It gets released down those bundle branches, the left and right, and then through to the Purkinje fibers, and that stimulates the contraction through the cardiac myocytes of your heart. And that's your general normal electrical conduction pathway. But if you look at the image on the right, you can see that that left bundle branch, well, it's blocked. And so what happens is, is the signal can't get through. So how does the cardiac myocytes on the left side of the heart and through the left ventricle, how do they get stimulated? Because they still do contract. Well, what happens is, is the SA node fires. It sends a signal down through the internodal pathways to your AV node. It gets held up at the bundle of his for a second, and then it's released down the bundle branches. Well, it's blocked with the left bundle branch, but the right bundle branch, well, it's open and working normally. And so the electrical conduction goes straight down the right bundle branch. It activates the cardiac myocytes in the right ventricle. But then it slowly goes from cell to cell to cell across the interventricular septum from the right ventricle, stimulating then the cells and the cardiac myocytes in the left ventricle. And so it causes a depolarization that way. Although keep in mind, it is a slower depolarization now because those cells are being stimulated from cell to cell to cell instead of through the normal conduction pathway in the left ventricle, which would be through the Bikinji fiber system in the left bundle branch. Now, to diagnose on an ECG a left bundle branch block, there's a couple of rules we like to apply. One is the cure restoration needs to be greater than 120 milliseconds or greater than three little boxes wide. You should have a dominant S wave in lead V1. You should have a broad monophasic R wave in the lateral leads 1, AVL, V5, and V6. And you should have absence of Q waves in the lateral leads, 1, V5, V6. Small Q waves are still allowed, though, in the lead AVL. And then you have a prolonged R wave peak time of greater than 60 milliseconds in the left precordial leads, V5 and V6. Now, looking at a normal pattern of a left bundle branch block, we need to really understand what we're looking at and how to interpret a normal left bundle branch so then we're able to apply and spot scarbosis criteria. So if you look here, in a normal left bundle branch block, lead V1 should be negatively deflected. So you have an R down into an S wave going in a downward direction or negative deflection. And that's what you should be looking for every time in lead V1. So in a normal left bundle branch block, lead V1 should be negatively deflected. If you look at lead AVL, you should have sort of an M-shaped QRS complex in lead AVL. It almost looks like two different peaks. And what do those two different peaks represent? Well, if you look at the first one, the first one is actually the depolarization and contraction of the right ventricle. Because remember, the right bundle branch is fine. The electrical signal is getting through normally. But if you look at the second peak, the second peak is a little bit wider, it's taking a little bit longer, and that represents the depolarization of the left ventricle, which has to happen just after the right because that electrical signal is going from cell to cell to cell across the right ventricle into the left ventricle and causing that depolarization. If you look at lead one, you see a similar sort of notched pattern. If you look at lead V6, you should have a mono, meaning one-shaped, phasic R wave, so one shaped R wave in lead V6. Again, to review what we just said, look at lead V1. It should be negatively deflected with a little bit of a notching at the bottom. That almost looks like the letter W. If you look at lead V6, well, 
that almost has that notching pattern, but it's going upward, and that looks like an M. And remember, that first notch represents the right ventricle depolarizing, and the second notch represents the left ventricle depolarizing. Where in a normal electrical induction pathway, you can't tell the difference between the two because they're both happening almost simultaneously. Here's just a quick image of a normal left bundle branch block pattern. Note the negative deflection in lead V1, the notching sort of pattern in 1, AVL, V5, and V6. This is the normal electrographic findings you should suspect when you're searching for the presentation of a left bundle branch block. Now, let's get to Elena Scarbosa's criteria. So we're going to talk about two of them today. And yeah, yeah, I know there's a third one, but that's for another episode. So for today, we'll talk about criteria A and criteria B. So if you look at criteria A on the left, remember, all you need to find is criteria A in any one lead, just one. So any one lead, if you see criteria A, that is positive for a STEMI in the presence of a left bundle branch block. And what you're looking for is inappropriate concordance inappropriate concordance which is the qrs and the st segment t wave heading in the exact same direction and it should be at least a millimeter or greater in height remember criteria a you're looking for the qrs is going up and the st segment and t wave is going upward so they're both heading in the same direction and that is known as the rule of inappropriate concordance and that would give you criteria A. If you saw that in just one lead, that's diagnostic on ECG for a STEMI in the presence of a left bundle branch block. Because remember, in a normal left bundle branch block, the QRS is going one way and the T wave should be going in the opposite direction. And that would be appropriate discordance. But in this case, you have inappropriate concordance, meaning the QRS and the T wave and ST segment are heading in the same direction. Okay, that's criteria A. Now criteria B. And criteria B, you should see a pattern in any one of the following leads. Lead V1 or lead V2 or lead V3. You don't need to have a combination of those. If you see this pattern I'm about to describe in any one of those leads, just one, V1 or V2 or V3, well, that would be diagnostic again on ECG for Scarbosa's criteria. And so here's how it works. So what you're looking for in lead V1 or V2 or V3 is you're looking for the QRS to be heading downward or negatively deflected, and you're looking for the ST segment in this case to start out and be heading in the same direction as well, and at least a millimeter deep. And so that would be also termed inappropriate concordance. The QRS complex and the ST segment are heading in the same direction. And that shouldn't happen. Remember, the QRS should always be going one way, and the ST segment and T wave should always be going in the opposite direction above the isoelectric line in a normal left bundle branch block. Now, if you saw that on an ECG on lead V1 or V2 or V3, that is also positive for Scarbosa's criteria and the presentation of STEMI in a left bundle branch block. Let's look at another example. So here we have an ECG tracing. Do you see criteria A or criteria B? Take a second and pause and have a look. Okay, we're back. Now look, criteria A, I see it in lead two. Look here, the QRS is going one way and the T wave and ST segment is going in the same direction. That is inappropriate concordance and that would be positive Scarbosa's criteria A. If you just saw that in just that lead, that's enough to call that a STEMI. But keep looking further. Do you see criteria A anywhere else? Sure, you see it in lead V4, lead V5, and lead V6. Those are all inappropriately concordant. That shouldn't happen. Remember, the QRS should be going one way, and the ST segment T wave should be going in the opposite direction. In this case, they're both heading in the same direction. Do you see criteria B? Sure, look at criteria B here. You have the QRS complex that is heading downward or negatively deflected in lead V2 and V3, and the ST segment and T wave is also heading in the same direction, at least a millimeter deep. That would be diagnostic for criteria B. So in this case, you have both of them met. 
And so this is a STEMI in the presence of a left bundle branch block. Let's look at another example. Pause your screen here to diagnose this on ECG. Okay, we're back. Do you see criteria A or criteria B? I see criteria A. Look at lead V4. The QRS is going one way and the ST segment T wave is also going in the same direction. That shouldn't happen in a left bundle branch block. And that alone, in just that one lead for criteria A, lead V4, is enough to say that's positive for Scarbosa's criteria and diagnostic of STEMI in the presence of a left bundle branch block. Let's look at another example. Pause here to diagnose the ECG. And we're back. Do you see criteria A or criteria B? Yeah, I see type criteria B. You have the QRS and lead V2 and V3 is heading downward or negatively deflective, and your ST segment is also heading in the same direction. That shouldn't happen in a normal left bundle branch block. That ST segment and T wave should be going in the opposite direction and starting above the isoelectric line. And so in this case, we can say this is positive for Scarbosa's criteria B. And remember, Scarbosa's criteria B, you just need to see these changes in lead V1 or V2 or V3. Any combination of them is fine. Let's look at another example. Pause here to have the interpretation. And we're back. Do you see criteria A or criteria B? Yeah, I see criteria A as well. Look at lead two. The QRS is heading one direction, and the ST segment and T wave is heading in the same direction. That is inappropriate concordance, and that should not happen in the presence of a left bundle branch block. That would be positive for Scarbosa's criteria A, and that alone is enough to call that a STEMI. But do you see it anywhere else? Sure. Look at lead V6. It's the same morphology. The QRS is heading one direction, and the ST segment and T wave is heading in the same direction, and that shouldn't happen. That's two times criteria A is met here. Did you notice anything else about the CCG? I know it looks subtle, but have you ever been told that you can't diagnose uh, STEMI in the presence of a paced rhythm? Because believe it or not, people who have paced rhythms or have, who have pacemakers, they produce ECG changes that are almost exactly the same as left bundle branch block patterns. And so if Scarbosa's criteria applies to a left bundle branch block, then why can't it apply to a paced rhythm? And so if you look closely here, these are tiny little pacer spikes. Look at the red arrow. It's showing teeny little notches, and those are indicative of a pacemaker. This patient is being paced. And so they have Scarbosa's criteria that is met in the presence of a paced rhythm, which also means we can diagnose STEMI in this case in this patient as well. And remember, until next time, sugar water auction to survive, the eyes can't see what the mind doesn't know, and in Klein's world, who gets an ECG? Almost everybody. Stay current. Hey, everyone. Thanks for being a part of today's episode. If you'd like to continue your learning, improve your skills, and provide a higher level of patient care, well, come be part of our community. If you're a student who wants to break through in emergency medicine, learn how to work the trucks in the streets, well, this is for you. If you're a seasoned veteran who's like, hey, I need to brush up on my skills, technology's moving forward, so should we, then this is for you. Come join this community at currentecg.com. Let's make emergency medicine education and ECG interpretation a little less scary and a little more fun. Again, subscribe to us at currentecg.com. Hope to see you soon. Stay current.